Welcome to our next tutorial of Quick Surface. This tutorial we will learn about the freeform modeling and all the details, tips and tricks and how to use it. The freeform modeling is designed to make reverse engineering of the parts which is hardly can be modeled with uh, other surfaces and this is a small example of this one. Although it looks simple, it's quite difficult to build with extruded or evolved surface, so this is clearly a free form. And this is how we can address by using our free form tool. In order to start a free form, you can just hit the button on the main toolbar. When you enter in the mode, you have a different commands on the action toolbar and then there are many options here which we can go through now. As a start I'll just put the model in top view just to highlight that this is a symmetrical object here it's properly aligned and we can start our modeling. By default the option is uh, set to add face mode and this is happens just by clicking on the screen and creating uh, four points in space wherever you want to place them. You can always have undo. Also the other option is if you want to make a perfect rectangle then you can choose the second command which is called a rectangular face and then you, all you need to do is just click on the two points on the two corners. And now as you see we created our first quote. So what can I do now is that I can manipulate this and start modeling. First option is when you use the mouse hover it highlights the elements elements of quote surface are points, edges and faces. So the options are that the user can put to points mount only and then you cannot select anything else. Edges, only the edges are selectable. You can put the faces only then it highlights the faces and you can select them by clicking on them. Or you can make extensive selection so you can select whatever you want. I personally find that points and edges is quite useful and enough for the purposes of modeling. So then we have this trunk length which I'll go later but now we, we created this and what can we do now? It's that we can select an element and then you can see the manipulator. The manipulator which is called in some software a combo is drawn on the screen it shows you different direction which you can move the object when I say object I mean either um, a face or point or several points and you can move the using the arrow which will move in the x direction y or z direction or if you hold this small white uh, squares the element will actually move in the plane in this case xy plane in such a way you can modify it and move the elements in space you can choose how this um, manipulator is oriented by default it's aligned to the world coordinate system but you can put it into screen coordinate system so it doesn't really matter how you move the object, you always see the X, Y of the screen. And then there is a third option which is local, which I will show you a bit later. So, once we have this small rectangle, we can start actually build our surface. If I highlight the edge, you can see a small D sign here, which means that if I hold my left mouse button, it will duplicate my edge. So in such a way we just increase another edge here and we extend it, this surface. 
then I can take this point and I can move it down and I can build this for example if I duplicate here I'll just undo this because we're not ready yet from the top view so now I can double click if I double click it just selects the whole chain of edges so this is really flexible and then you can just duplicate the edge out I can double click here and I can move this in inside so the next step would be let's just put the manipulator in the world corner system show you a bit more here if you if you have more elements selected you can see this uh, um, quote circles this means that you can actually rotate the selection around their extents in this plane or you can scale the selected like this one for example if I select these six points actually the way we can select those is just by holding the left mouse button dragging and lifting this will select all of them so now as you see I can scale and I can change my shape another way of duplicating an edge is if you double click you select everything you just hold the ALT key and instead of using the design you just precisely if you hold ALT key while holding it and then you move it will duplicate the edge it's useful if you want to make really exact extracting of the points here so this is how we started now to build our first couple of uh, rectangles here you can just manipulate and you can see the shape you can change it I can just take if I use everything I can just move the whole face up and down move it in space and in such a way create my free form surface the other thing is about this type of modeling is that this is the result surface but it's controlled with the, what we call a control net a control net is actually can be analog to the B splines. This is the control net which defines the under underneath surface. So if you we take a look here, this is the control net and it generates free form between them. So this is a kind of a control point for um, for the surface. But you can only switch this off and you can use actually with the feature points. This makes the software quite easy to use and you can see what happens on the screen I'll just put it on top so if I just duplicate here with the ALT key and like this one and if I just try to move this because of the spline theory you see that these neighbors they actually move in space also there is an option so you can turn this option on don't move neighbors this means that the software will actually try to keep the point here and not to move them in space this is useful in many cases when you want to refine the, the results now there is an option which is called drag strength and it's useful when you want to do some really fine tuning I can just put these two points and faces and edges I click here and if I move this it moves with the mouse but in some cases you may need to move really slowly and really fine so you can change this drag strength and as you see here even if I move with the mouse it moves really slowly I can put it even to the minimum and then it's uh, actually really 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 slow at any point you can turn the zebra rendering which gives you the continuity in the map and you can have analysis of what your surface is so when you work and when you modify your control points or feature points you can see the smoothness of the surface quick surface provides g2 continuity between the patches and if we have extraordinary points the continuity g1 which means the tangency 
I will put this in top view and will continue. You can turn this on and off from this uh, display mode. You can adjust the some parameters of the zebra rendering, you can change the stripe width, you can make it vertical or horizontal rendering and then you can change it to a different colors depending on the user preferences. When you're ready you can press them. The mesh display is also an interesting option. So if we, we put this on the screen there are two ways of how we can render the mesh. It can be rendered a bit slightly behind the surface, but this is only that it's, it's rendered like this, not that the mesh is moved. So the user can see, or you can just use the slides there, and you can see the, um, the how the rendering is. Later we will learn that this is important, and in some cases this is not enough, so that's why we offer abilities to render it as a transparent. And then the slider in this case will affect the transparency of, of the mesh. So you can use a, can always just use these two options to adjust the visualization of the mesh. Another option which we have is what we call the tolerance display. When we are in the tolerance display, the, um, our result surface is compared to the mesh and you get an instant result on the screen of your deviation. You can of course set the, your tolerance, how close you want to be, let's say 0.5 millimeters in this case, and then when I just move in real time you can see my deviation. We'll start later to remodel this part and you see you will see how powerful this option is. And the last thing in our basics in the free form is that we support the symmetry. I will just delete this part here because I don't need it. The symmetry is uh, working only on the main axis so that's why you have to pre-align your object properly if you want to work with the symmetry and you can choose which side it needs to be our symmetry plane. So when the symmetry is enabled, whatever I do in one part will actually appear on the others and keeps all the points symmetrical. Big question is what happens here and as you see if we try to snap them, they don't really snap at all because of the symmetry. In this case we have an uh, option so the user can just double click the whole edge chain for example which needs to be on the symmetry and then he can set this set on a symmetry plane. Now what happens the software always visualizes a green line showing us where the symmetry is. Having this symmetry, so this means that even if I try to move the point sideways, it always stays on my plane of symmetry. Then, one interesting fact is that the continuity between the patches on the symmetry, because they're snapped, it's also G2. So in such a way you can get a good and nice and smooth transition. I'll just put this at the back. So this is our first freeform surface which we managed to create in no time. And just to add that all these options are also accessible on the um, context menu and this works by right clicking and then you can choose how the selection should be, the manipulator and what the mesh dis model displays. Maybe now it's good to speak a little bit what local means. This means that if we have a freeform surface like this one, and if I define my, my manipulator, as you see, the Z direction of the manipulator is uh, the normal of the surface, and this is also quite useful. There is no warranty what the X, Y will be, so this is most powerful if you want to move a point only in the direction which is perpendicular to the 
surface. So this was our first base tutorial how to start. We will continue in the next one with the more advanced uh, tools and settings. Thank you.